The fight for equality, true equality, in the military will only come when women are allowed to fight on the front lines. That's how many women feel. Some so strongly they find a lawsuit for the right to fight alongside their male counterparts. Major Mary Jennings Hager, one of the plaintiffs in the suit, had this to say, quote, Service women in all branches of the military are already fighting for their country alongside their male counterparts. They shoot, they return fire, they drag wounded comrades to safety, they engage the enemy, and they have been doing these heroic deeds since the Revolutionary War. These women want the combat exclusion policy to go away. They say it's unconstitutional and prevents commanders from assigning the right troops for the right jobs. But a group called Center for Military Readiness is opposed to women fighting on the ground alongside men. Elaine Donnelly is the president and founder of that group. She also served in a defense advisory committee on women in the services in 1984 and in 1992. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to talk with you. Thank you for being here. You think allowing women to fight uh, is a bad idea. Tell me why. Well, first of all, we're not talking about allowing. We're talking about requiring. Because combat is the kind of, of mission that involves attacking the enemy, deliberate offensive action against enemy troops under fire. It's the kind of a position that military women in the majority don't want to have. They don't want to be treated exactly like men. It's a good time to have a calm discussion about this because after 11 years of war, we've seen women do remarkable things. But we've also seen the differences between direct ground combat, the units that are all male, the tip of the spear units that attack the enemy, and being in danger, in harm's way. Yes, women are in harm's way, and we are very proud of them. But if we put women into direct ground combat infantry battalions, it would be harmful to both women and men, and it would complicate missions greatly. Well, I'm just curious, are men required to fight? Oh yes, if, once you join the army, if you, are, uh, you must carry out orders to go wherever you are ordered to go. So there is no such thing as a voluntary option. You couldn't say that, well, women will have a different rule. Maybe you can do it if you feel like it and maybe not. If you don't, no, it wouldn't work that way. It would have to be mandatory. Well, I, I guess the I, presidential commission. I, I guess I'm struggling to understand. The when, when, you enter the military, when you enter the military, you follow mm -hmm. orders. There's not much voluntary about the That's military. Right. That's exactly right. So there is this complication, though. If the, the exemptions of women from direct ground combat were repealed, then the issue of selective service registration would be revisited. The ACLU would go to court on behalf of men, and that likely would be a winning case. Then we would have young women, civilian women, also being involved and liable to the obligation to be in the military, direct ground combat, same as men. Well, now, the problem with that is, and there's so many reasons, women are not physically the same as men. In the, in the direct ground combat environment, women don't have an equal opportunity to survive or to help fellow soldiers survive. We have 30 years of studies on this and reports. It's not even in question. Well, and that's let me interrupt you for just a issue. second because I'd like to argue that point physically ready. I, I don't think that these women who file a lawsuit would agree with you at all, especially since one of them said, we're already fighting alongside our male counterparts. You know, they return fire, well, they I drag said, wounded comrades to safety, they engage the enemies. She says women are already doing this. They're physically capable of doing that. There's proof of that. This woman in particular won a Purple Heart for her bravery. Again, definitions are, definitions, definitions are important. As I said, yes, women are in harm's way. They are defending their, their, themselves. They are engaging the enemy, but they are not in the units we're talking about today, Carol, direct ground combat, infantry battalions, the tip of the spear, special operations forces, marine and army infantry, that's what we're talking about. So although we respect and honor women who have served, and so many have already died in these last 10 years of war, it's still not making the case that women but, should but be in the direct ground don't, combat but don't infantry women battalions. Have this point that if women Aren't no, it is to, not a well, legal matter. Let me ask this question. Let's, let me ask this question. Mm -hmm. If women don't have equality in the military, how can they have equality when it comes to rank, when it comes to power within the military, when it comes to advancing their careers? Good question. Good question. Women are promoted at rates equal to or faster than men. 
and it's been that way for decades. Oh, come on. So there is no equal opportunity. Come on. This how, is, many you women, can ask the how many women four-star generals ask, do you know? Or how many Pentagon. women have been a, a, a joint chief? Ask the Pentagon. The reason you don't have women in three- and four-star ranks is because they have career plans that don't usually require or, or would involve 30 years of service. It makes it pretty hard to have a family life, and that's why a lot of women who might be qualified to be a three- and four-star general or admiral choose not to go on that career path. Now, you, you don't want to go with a tri trickle-up kind of you thing could, where you force you say the same enlisted thing about women. Men because they have children, too, and responsibilities to their families? Yes, they do, but, but again, I'm, I'm looking at the empirical evidence. We know that women make different career choices. So they are promoted at rates equal to or faster than men. The Pentagon has acknowledged this. This goes back decades. It's not changed. But the women but if entering you want the military first are not female, making different career choices. If you want They're to have the military. If you want to have if you want to have a first female chairman of the Joint Chiefs, that is not a good enough reason. But if say General Odierno wanted to give up his seat to a female general for sake for the sake of diversity, he could do that. He could do that right now. But why should enlisted women, who are five times as numerous, <clears throat> excuse me, as female officers, why should they have to be treated like men, have all the burdens of direct ground combat put on their so shoulders? That would not be fair to the women. It would not be fair to the men. The women don't want it. Uh, this is all being driven by a small minority of civilians and the ACLU, well, which I is probably the study lawsuit. showing that. I, Again, I, I think the women are somewhat the misguided. Thank you, Elaine. Donnelly. Well, it's a big subject, but it needs it to be it needs to be ob objectively discussed. Thank you, Elaine Donnelly, for joining us this morning. Thank Just you. We'll be right back.